Really? Yeah. That's amazing. All right, guys. Um, hi, it's Brindley for hi, our Brindley. Pacific North for our Pacific folks this morning. So if you're watching on Facebook, hello, jump on the call. We'd love to have you. Otherwise, I am just going to be selfish and use all of these people to my advantage right now. So we actually have an addition for this call, which I'm super excited about. Um, I'm going to let our guests introduce themselves. They are super, super human, amazing individuals, friends. They blew my mind on this morning's call. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit more about that today. So Adam, do you want to introduce yourself first and then Melinda and then Carrie will come to you? Absolutely. Carrie, I love it. Um, so uh, I, I lead a team in Springfield, Missouri. Um, we did um, about 470 transactions last year. Um, we have one expansion location about an hour down the road from us. Um, and uh, I have 17 people on my team. And what's the makeup of the 17, Adam? So um, we have seven admin, we have six in-house and one ISA, or, or one, excuse me, virtual assistant. Um, we have four ISAs, and then um, we have two buyer's agents, two showing assistants, and two listing agents. Awesome, awesome. All right, Melinda, introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Melinda Love, and I'm the Director of Operations for the Grady Real Estate team. And I get to just work beside some of the best humans I, I know. Mm -hmm. So we have fun every day. <laughs> every day. She really is the chief everything officer, like holds it together. She's phenomenal, phenomenal. So if you don't know Melinda and you're in operations, I highly encourage you to reach out to her. And Carrie, tell them who you are. What a surprise. I was not expecting that at all. Um, oh, wow. I'm Carrie Worsh. I am the lead buyer's agent. Um, for Grady Real Estate. And um, I've got a buyer's agent underneath me and a showing partner and also a listing agent. So kind of building a team within a team and um, very blessed and fortunate to be a part of such an amazing, amazing team. So, so awesome. So just to kind of give you an idea of their results and then I'm gonna have them talk about kind of tips and tricks and what they're doing to achieve those results. They have put, they've taken 39 listings. They've put 37 homes under contract and um in the last 30 days so massive that's almost a, a listing a day and a contract a day that's huge that's huge so adam talk to us about how we're making this happen and then we'll go to melinda and carrie sure um really through managing expectations so brindley we already had a really great pipeline coming into the spring Mm -hmm. you know, before the shelter in place and all this, I mean, it really snuck up on us. And if it didn't sneak up on you, you're lying to me. Right. And so we just had to shift really quick and change what our activities were to make sure that whole pipeline still came to fruition. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, on this morning's call, somebody asked, well, where are all these listings coming from? Well, there were all of our listings that we were nurturing along into the spring market. Anyway, mm -hmm. we were just able to coach them onto the market and manage their expectations up front and take certain precautions and explain to them what this would look like during the shelter in place order. Mm -hmm. And we got their buy-in by jumping on it early. You know, um, Anna Kruger tells us this, this great story and I absolutely love it. I keep going back to it when she was on Haro's team. And then they played this game is if the, if the client called you, you lose, mm -hmm. right? And so we called them before they even had a chance to call us and say, hey, we know this is going on and this is what we're doing, the measures that we're taking place um, and all the precautions that our team is going to be doing. And this is how we're going to do business under the shelter in place order. And we got their buy-in and we were able to still get that whole pipeline going on the market. And we still have them coming on the market. I think we have nine right now that are signed that aren't on yet for one reason or another. And so we're continuing putting those on the market every day. So what I'm hearing you say also is that you're getting paperwork signed. And we talked a little bit about that this morning. And Carrie, I'm going to come to you real quick because Adam kind of shared the story this morning of how you're getting them to sign and some of the scripts that you're using to get them to sign right now and not wait. Yeah. So um, I feel like we kind of were in front of this a little bit ahead of time. I mean, we do buyer consultations with every single one of our clients and Aaron Hurd is my coach and he, you know, whenever we would do like phone consultations, the conversion rate was just a lot lower. And he always would say, well, what if you would set them up on a zoom? And that was really kind of intimidated that for, with that for a little while. And so he was like, you know what, I challenge you to 
um, you know, do a couple of test runs. So I actually got Claire, our lead ISA, and we did a full Zoom consultation over the phone just to work out all of the kinks and everything else. And she even told me at the end, she was like, wow, I'm ready to buy a house. So <laughs> I, I think that went really, really well. But um, but yeah, whenever we do the Zoom consultations, it's actually really, really cool because I can flip my screen around. A lot of times I ask them, have they seen a property that they like? And so I can look at that with them and we can go through and they can point out some characteristics that they really, really love. So it's really dialing them down. But then whenever, um, you know, we get through to the documentation that I normally give them, I'm able to still do each one of those and I'm able to go through our loyalty agreement and, you know, okay, this is line number 31 and this is what this means. And I basically just go through it like I would if they were sitting directly in front of me and I use my cursor to point out anything and I say, you know, do you have any questions? And they say, no, this looks really good. And so I ask them to go ahead and sign it while we're um, on the Zoom. So that way, if there's any kinks, um, we can help each other just because electronic signatures, sometimes we have people say, I can't get something to work. Um, but that way everything's done and taken care of during the call. Awesome. So and that's the beauty there, Brenly. It's everything's done and taken care of during that call. So we're not hanging up expecting them to transact with us later mm -hmm. because that's when objections start coming up mm -hmm. and we're not there to have any kind of rebuttal. And we're able to do that right there at that time and know that when we hang up the call from them, we've got signed paperwork and we're ready to move forward on their goals. 100%. And I think that whenever we're talking about the consultation um, and explaining how everything is going virtually and explaining why having the electronic signatures figured out up front is because that's how you're going to be writing the contract when we move forward and when we go through inspections, you know, so just making sure that they understand that system. I love that. I and love it's that. And it's, it's been really successful. I think, Carrie, I looked, you did 12 buyer consults last week. Yeah. So let's talk about that for a minute. How are you converting? How are you getting them into buyer consult? How are you converting into the appointment? Our well, Claire is our lead I say, and she happens to be on the call. So let's go to her. Our conversion is actually amazing. I know our conversion ratios have actually went up. Like our one of our showing partners, uh, Katie, her her conversion ratios of held to signed have went up from. 50% to 78%. Like she's into to getting under contract. So it's really incredible. Wow. Claire, can you unmute yourself for us, honey, and talk about yeah. conversion? Yeah, we, um, you know, we really haven't changed a lot um, in our scripts. Our scripts are still the same. Um, and, you know, we aren't, you know, putting objections where there aren't any. So mm -hmm. if people have a need, you know, I think, um, Carrie, I've heard other people say, you know, we're just meeting people where they're at and there's still people um, that have to sell their life happens and they have life needs that are forcing them to move in or out um, or they have a need, um, you know, to buy again and we're I'm just meeting them there. So, um, and it's the delivery. So um, great, you know, I'm so glad that you're wanting to meet. We'll do a Zoom consultation and um, Carrie will meet with you. She'll do everything she would have done had we met in person. And then we'll go from there with however you feel comfortable. And that's how we set it up as an ISA. That's amazing, amazing. Yeah. And so what would you accredit the conversion, the high conversion rates when I have the world telling me that they can't convert? Yeah, um, I think you, um, you have to definitely talk to more people <laughs> to find, yeah, to find the motivated. So most of our ISAs, um, they've literally doubled their number. So instead of talking um, to 20, 30, 40 people a day, you know, our average is 50 and above right now. So we're having to talk to a lot more people um, to get that. Um, but the people that are raising their hand are raising it really high too, right? They're ready to go. If you're looking, um, if you're talking to an agent um, in this market or you have an interest, it's typically a really strong motivation. And um, I think our, um, how we handle it and how, you know, when they bring up, you know, I know to, right now might not be a great time. Oh, well, you know, tell me more about that, you know, and when they see that it's really not anything scary, you know, everything can be done. I'm um, just like it was before, even if a little bit different, um, they feel really confident and they feel um, safe moving forward. What I'm hearing you say is that you don't create the objection for them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we just keep rolling with it unless they bring up something. Um, and then um, 
um, as Anna would say, you isolate the objection, right? You know, if, if um, that objection wasn't there, whatever it is, would you still want to transact? And we just narrow it down from there. Okay. Yeah. Love that. My side put 17 homes under contract in the last 30 days. And so 20 of those were listings, but man, that's incredible. Huge. So then we come back to Carrie and we say, sorry, guys, we're sorry, Adam and Melinda, we're, I'm, they're hijacking your call. Um, <laughs> we come back to Carrie and we say, okay, so now we have the set to held is high because our ISAs are doing a great job. How are you getting it held to sign? I mean, we're, we're asking them to sign whenever we're on the, the consultation. So I, I think that it's a really easy conversation because you can basically say that, you know, in order for me to run searches and for me to send my buyer's agent or showing partner out to go look at the property, I have to know that you are going to be loyal to me and I'm going to be loyal to you because we are in, you know, extreme circumstances. And I think that people really understand that. Um, and I think what Claire said is exactly right. Like, don't insert an objection because there's some people that are actually doing really great. I've had people call me and they're like, I feel really bad, but I got a raise, you know, and, you know, it's, it's focused on those positives and don't bring up that, that, that negativity or circumstance if it's, if it's not even a part of their narrative. I think that is so, so important to remember. And I think also we're going to start to see some stress relieved because PPP loans are getting approved. People are starting to see the money, the stimulus money come in. So I think faith is a little bit starting to get restored and people are shifting their mindset a little bit, which I think is huge. So Melinda and Adam, I'm coming to you. Easter. Let's talk about Easter because this guy's is going to blow your mind. Like wait till you hear what they did on Easter. Melinda, you want to? It was so fun. So we had planned an Easter egg hunt. It was our first annual Easter egg hunt. Kelsey, our marketing director, and I just really love Easter and it was, we were passionate about it. So we had planned it about a week before this all started and we had over 300 people signed up like early March to jump into our, and we had left it open to up to 500 people. And then when all this happened, of course, you know, they put a ban and we couldn't do an Easter egg hunt for 300 people. So I'm like, you know what? I had our bought eggs. I had vendors that had donated money. And I'm like, we're going to do it on our VIP clients' yards. And we're going to go take care of our team members. Like I really, like those team members that with kids, we want to take care of them and make their Easter memorable. So that is what we did. Kelsey um, and her boyfriend, Riley, he dressed up as Easter Bunny. She borrowed a suit from an, another person that she knew and we stuffed eggs and she and Riley delivered them all day long. Adam drove them to also to the Discovery Center, which is, it's a, a fun place for kids here in our, our town. And they have been a state um, child care center since all this happened for healthcare workers. So he drove the Easter Bunny there with his sunroof and um, the, the Easter Bunny got to see, you know, dozens of kids to wish them a happy Easter. So uh, it was just so neat to see all the smiling faces and families. Like we had texts and social media posts all day long Friday. We touched over 34 homes, over a hundred children. And I mean, the exposure of that was way better than what we could have even probably done with our Easter egg hunt. So it's our new normal Easter egg hunt is going to be um, just individual Easter eggs in your yard with Easter Bunny so you can take pictures. That's exactly That's amazing. Right. Really, we went back and actually procured the suit now. So we own the suit now because this is so replicatable for us and it's so manageable. You know, we can predict the outcome. You know, because we said we had 300 people RSVP. Well, who's going to show up that RSVP'd um, or, or not show up that RSVP'd? And who's going to show up that didn't RSVP? And trying to manage that big of a crowd. And if all of our customers showed up, you know, and they were all people that we wanted to interact with, there's no way you could talk to them all and make sure that they were all having a great experience. It would be very tough to entertain all the parents. Are we going to feed them? Like, what does the facility look like in the future? And this is so much more predictable. And we can scale this. Right. Or two weeks prior to Easter, assuming the economy is open next Easter, right? We can go to businesses, mm -hmm. right? We can drop off donuts, we can drop off cupcakes. And you know, this happened so organically. And parents were so thrilled. You know, Kelsey, our marketing director, she'd call Carrie and say, Hey, your clients are next up. 
text the Smiths and tell them I'm on my way. And she's like, hey, Smith family, hope you're great. I'm sending the Easter Bunny over to your front yard, ETA 15 minutes. And the kids are pressed up against the window and they pull up and he goes out and hides eggs in the front yard. They watch the whole thing and he waves, they take pictures of him. Then the kids come out and hunt the eggs and they go off to the next house. And the parents are taking pictures. Thank you, Grady Real Estate, made our weekend, right? It's all over social media. And we couldn't buy that kind of advertisement. No. no. You know, a lady said, how do I get the bunny to come to our house? And the client responded back. She's like, you just have to buy a house from them. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. When I visualize us buying five suits in a year, like honestly, five of us to dress up, up, we can go old. do. You can cover a lot of ground. You can cover a lot of ground in a short amount of time. And, you know, Riley is a manager at Old Navy, which is closed, right? Mm -hmm. So he's shelter in place. It was, you know, a great way for him to make some extra money and to go out and entertain our clients. Like it was just a win-win all the way around. Well, and what I love is, I mean, I said it this morning, if I had kids and you told me that you would come hide the Easter eggs for me in my yard, so I didn't have to do it. I'd, I mean, I'd buy a house from you every time I buy a house. Like, I mean, seriously, like think about the stress that parents go through, right? You can even do Easter baskets. It was really fun. And Brindley, when the people weren't home, we just put the bunny on the front porch, took pictures of their house with the bunny on the front porch, hid the eggs in the yard and then sent it to the family. So, and then they turned around and shared that on social media, you know, yeah. but they were able to take that picture and show their kids, Hey, the Easter bunny came by and they could jump out of the car and go hunt eggs and it just, especially right now when people are down, like this really gave them a lot of hope and made everybody so excited. So it just, it worked out so beautifully. As soon as it was over, we called the people and said, hey, how much for the Easter Bunny suit? Yeah, and and I, think, I think the theme, and, and Melinda, I'm going to come to you next because I want you to talk about the hand, Adam talked about hand sanitizer and toilet paper and how you guys acquired that in the beginning. This team has never stopped thinking big throughout of this throughout this like they didn't go to the limit thinking they went okay here's the here's the challenge the obstacle how high can we go how big can we go to to overcome it and I thought that was huge so Melinda can you talk about that a little bit in the beginning yes I think we all thrive in chaos or at least I do it actually I love a challenge like it makes me happy so just knowing what we would need I mean I knew we'd need to be safe I came from a food service background so you know, I knew food service providers, I knew we could get need sanitizer, we needed gloves, we needed booties, and we needed to get them in all of our listings. So that's what we did. I actually, at first, had to buy sanitizer wherever I could find it, but I set up an account, a corporate account with, we have a local sanitizer manufacturer here, and we set up an account with them and um, was able to get several cases of sanitizer. We were able to supply our, our expansion agent in Joplin with sanitizing kits, which was great for all of his listings. So um, it, was, it was a really great thing to be able to just think about what everybody was going to need, what was going to be the, the thing that they needed to overcome and get them out there right away. Huge, 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 huge. And Adam, you said you talked about the sign that's outside your listings and then how you set the expectations with the sellers. Absolutely. Um, how's that going? So, um, you know, there's so much information out there right now on, on KWU and there's so many people like yourself, Burnley, that are volunteering their time and there's the word shifts getting thrown around and pivot and well, what's that mean? It, it means being really agile, acting quickly on your feet and being willing to do a course correction really fast. And so Melinda, having the background that she did said, you know, like we probably are going to need to have this stuff. And she went out and started shopping immediately when, when there was not a a huge demand for it yet. So we had a, we were able to get a run on a ton of product and bring it in and then start immediately turning around and getting on the phone with our customers and telling them that this is what we were doing. So it allowed us to really be ahead of the curve and manage all of their expectations up front. So everybody was happy. Nobody had to call us concerned. We called them first and said, Hey, this is how we're going to take care of this. And this is the solution. So uh, I, I really applaud Melinda because she was the one pushing in the very beginning, like we need to buy this and we need to buy this and we need to buy this and, and we invested in that stuff and it came back to us tenfold. Um, you know, Claire got on the phone and, um, you know, her conversations were around three questions, you know, how are you, how's your family and what do you need? And so people were asking us, 
well, I, I, everybody's out of toilet paper. Great, we'll send toilet paper over. Well, we can't find sanitizer. Great, we'll, we'll find sanitizer. Mm -hmm. um, we went grocery shopping for some, some clients that were elderly and couldn't leave their house. Um, Melinda had, um, had told that story this morning about one of Carrie's clients who had just closed on a house, had a brand new baby, and they couldn't find the baby's formula. So Melinda just got in the car and just started, started out on the track and went from store to store to store until she found that formula and then went and delivered it to them. Right? So it was just making sure that when you ask the question, hey, how are you? How's your family? And what do you need? When somebody says, hey, this is my need that you're ready to run and meet it immediately. I think that's huge because that's where the magic happens, right? That's where you create the wow experience. So I just had a thought because you're such forward thinkers, has there been any conversation on the team around how we need to prepare for the next phase of this, whatever that might be. Um, and then also when shelter is lifted, all of this mind share and pipeline that we're filling right now, have you all started kind of forward thinking what your plan is gonna be there? So our biggest um, action plan right now is to make sure that we have the most inventory we can have when this bounces back. So um, Gary says you can't predict the market and he's exactly right. So let's say the shelter in place gets lifted. Well, how long will it take for the market to actually come back, right? For the, the workers actually to be back in their jobs and consumer confidence to come back. We don't know what that looks like, regardless of the date that actually shelter in place is over. We don't know how long it takes for the market to bounce back, but we wanna make sure that when it bounces back, we have all the inventory out there. We owe that to our customer, right? to make sure that they're forward facing with a sign in the yard, ready to accept an offer the second that market swings back. And so that's really the one thing we're focusing on is listings and we're pushing that really hard to make sure we can get that listing count up as high as possible. What I can predict is that this market will come back like a rubber band because there's so much pinup demand right now. What we don't know is how long will that demand last? <laughs> You know, I, I know we're still in an inventory shortage and I'm certain that things are going to fly off the market quickly when all these people finally come out of the woodwork, but how long is that going to last and is it going to tail off, mm -hmm. right? And so that's what we don't know, but we do know that that next wave is coming and that's what we're preparing for is that next immediate wave. Yeah, I think that's so important to be thinking about that. And like you said, I think you, Gary said, um, you know, we can't predict the market, but we were the architects. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's really what you're doing. That's what you just said. You're designing the market by making sure that you control the inventory. Yep. And there and are people the that are still in the narrative. What was that? What was that, Adam? Control the inventory by controlling the narrative to our customer, right? And, and calling them and talking to them and educating them to make sure that inventory still shows up and that they're not sitting on the sidelines thinking mm -hmm. things are worse than they are. Mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, we don't know what they're listening to. Right? Are they stuck on CNN or MSNBC or Fox News all day long? Right? Or, and, and what are they interpreting and how are they interpreting it? And we know this market or this business, excuse me, is extremely hyper local mm -hmm. and nobody's educating them on our current real estate climate. Mm -hmm. That's our job. So by controlling that narrative, we're able to control the outcome because we yeah. can get them on the market. Um, we can meet their expectations and still be able to meet their goals. Yeah. 100%. Carrie, do you have anything to add to that from a buyer perspective? Um, I think that it's just expectation management. I mean, whenever all of this happened, I mean, Adam nailed it on the head. We were just in front of it. So everybody kind of divided and conquered. Um, the transaction coordinators immediately called every single person that was pending and kind of just explained, like, this is how we're going to be moving forward. And this is how closings are going to change. Um, you know, buyer consultations, whenever you know, people will say, well, how are we going to go look at houses? So it's just, we ask, we tell people those things before they can even ask the question. And we are completely armed with, you know, all the, all the, 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 everything that we need. I mean, I showed some physicians the other day and they walked in the house and I was like, here's your gloves, you know, and it kind of went through the whole thing. And so I think that it's just the whole expectation management and um, making sure that everybody feels comfortable and feels really, really safe. Mm -hmm. And um, we have not had any pushback. I mean, that's the thing that I think that really is um, surprising is like, I, I feel like during all of this, I've got like major tunnel vision and I'm just really focusing on our clients and their needs. And, you know, um, Allie in my office and Katie in my office, we're just being very, very um, 
high communication with all of our buyers because we've got such a huge pipeline. And if somebody says, you know, I want to wait a couple of weeks um, just for all of this to come off or shelter in place, absolutely no problem. We're still going to continue to send you properties. And if, if you need anything at all, we will go look at the house for you. We will tell you if it's a good fit. And then once you feel comfortable, we'll get you in there. So I think it's just always coming from a place of contribution um, and making sure that people really understand that we're here for you. Like, you know, we're not just trying to make a sale. Like that's not what this is about. Mm -hmm. And just explaining the process to them. And then everybody feels really comfortable. It makes it very, very um, easy and smooth. A hundred percent. 100%. That's amazing. That's amazing. Melinda, did you have anything to add? Just to think that we have a team full of achievers and rock stars that truly love what they do. We love to give to people and care about people. You know, Claire and the ISA team making those care calls, it's just so easy because we truly do care about our clients. And you know, we are about to work. One of our listings is going live today. It's a friend of mine. And you know, we were helping them find other avenues that they need to do an estate sale and they can't. So what can we do to help them? So we're just always thinking of solutions to think outside the box. And what I love about our team is you bring an idea or a suggestion or a problem to the team. And like, you've got 15 different ideas that are just amazing. So I love that about our team that we are really love to all problem solve. Yeah. Claire, I'm going to come to you to add your thoughts. And then Adam, I'm coming to you about leadership next. Claire, are you starting to see, you know, we this is some some folks, this is three, four, five weeks. Are you starting to make your second round of calls? And what does that look like? Well, we haven't started um, a second round of calls yet. Um, we've got the, what is it, D to D something schedule. Um, so we may go back to that. Um, we have been setting our clients up on really strategic like text message groups. Um, okay. So we can kind of hit them a couple different ways. Um, so we may follow up with the text message um, to kind of um, summarize our calls. Um, so we talked about that. Um, but yeah, we're just continually, um, our follow-up schedule is a little bit closer. If we felt like somebody had a need or somebody just wasn't you know, doing the best, um, we took them out of our typical follow-up um, for a past client and moved them over to something um, a little more personal so that we can make sure and give them extra attention. You pivot the follow-up too, based on what's happening yeah. at that moment. Awesome. Yeah. So Adam, wrap us up the last couple of minutes on leadership and what are your tidbits for leading your team through this? Well, um, I would say it's really similar to how we're having communication with our customer. Mm -hmm. It's about expectation management. And, you know, I mentioned to you this morning that we kind of had that emergency 7 p.m. call when mm -hmm. all this was happening. And yeah. we grabbed everybody at the last minute and said, let's jump on the phone and let's strategize on what this is going to look like. And it was really going and ensuring them that, hey, if you're a salaried employee, I'll go mortgage my house before I lay you off. So don't worry. Mm -hmm. Right. If you're a um, commission employee, I want to assure you that your money will show up. It's just going to show up differently because mm -hmm. of how the transaction is going to show up. You know, so Carrie was mentioning before, well, hey, I'm going to wait until this passes. Well, if this didn't happen, would they have bought in March or maybe early April? And now that this happened, will they buy in May or June? Yes, right? The transaction is just going to show up in a different way than we were expecting it to. But I am confident because of our activities Mm -hmm. When they look back at the previous 12 months, their income will show up the way that they had hoped it would at the beginning of the year. Yeah. And it's, it's really just continuing to manage those expectations so they're not nervous mm -hmm. and they know that we're going to see this through together. 100%. 100%. And um, can you just touch real quick on stand-ups? Absolutely. So um, we started that about three years ago and we do that um, every morning at 8 a.m. already. And mm -hmm. it's an opportunity for the agents on the team to all call in and we have no real agenda except to go person by person through the team and say hey carrie how are you going to win the day today and carrie says well i've got a nine o'clock consultation right i've got a, a 10 30 consultation right i got buyers coming in at noon i'm showing at three right i have a closing at four right she just kind of goes through her day and then we go to the next person in line and we say hey justin how are you going to win the day and he goes through his day and it's an opportunity for us all to get on the same page 
maybe talk about any potential rocks we have that day or some place where we need help. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's it's the really the place that I get to see our team shine because Carrie will say, well, I'm, I'm really kind of nervous about this and I've got to get this going. And immediately somebody else on the team, Allie will say, no problem, I'll take care of that for you, mm -hmm. right? And Allie gets nothing for that, but she knows that next time she has an issue, Carrie will take care of it for her. And it's just really a great time in the morning that our team's able to shine and it really gets our energy up gets us on the same page to go start our day. And um, if, mm -hmm. if you have a team and you're not doing that, I highly encourage you to start it, especially during the shelter in place. You guys can all stay on the same page. We use the Uber conference line. Um, it's free, it costs nothing. And this is a great time to get buy-in from your team to start doing those power-up calls in the morning. Yeah. You know, we have the ability to be in one office you know, when it's not shelter in place and I'll do our standups, but just because of our crazy schedules, we do it on the phone and it works so well. So well. And I think consistency is key there. You're consistent mm -hmm. with it. So it's predictable guys. Thank you so much. And Claire and Carrie, thanks for joining. This was awesome. awesome. Um, yeah. Thank you. Awesome. So Melinda, <laughs> Melinda and Adam, tell them how to get a hold of you. Sure. Um, email me at Adam at Adam .com. Uh, Grady has two D's. And Melinda at adamgrady.com. Melinda at adamgrady.com. Guys, thank you so much. Reach out to these folks. They're huge, huge help. And um, we will see you tomorrow. Have an awesome day. Bye, guys. Thanks, Lindley.